Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. In the middle of January 2021, ICOM announced some new firmware updates for several of their SDR radios, including the IC7300. Well, as I'm recording this at the end of February 2021, the firmware for the 7300 just became available. So let's take a look at what we need to do to load it into the radio and let's see what it does. All right, to get to the firmware for the 7300, you're going to go to the ICOM Japan firmware download page. And I'll have a link to this uh, in the description for this video. But uh, you can see here, it gives you a little description of it, tells you it's version 1.40. That's what we're going to be working with here today. And it talks about some of the features. We'll go through those in a little bit. And we're going to go down here, and you need to click that I have fully read and understood and agreed, and then it will let us download the file. And it takes us to a download page, and my software asks me where I want to download it. And I have a folder for IC7300 files, and that's where I'm going to put it. It's a zip file. And we've got that. Now, the one other thing that you're going to want to download is there is, back up here, if you scroll down from the top of the page, there is a manual download page. And we're going to want to download that as well. And it's not the full manual. They did not update the entire manual. So we're going to pick this piece here that says Firmware Update Information. And that is the manual section for these new updates. So once again, we're going to agree. We're going to download this. And this is the piece. So I'm going to download it from the browser that's built in here and again I'm going to put that into the 7300 file so we'll look at this manual once we have it installed on the radio. Alright so we've got both files we've got the actual firmware update downloaded and we've got the manual download. Alright here's my folder with the file and we are going to want to unzip this and I'm just going to say, whoops, not sure why that disappeared on me. I'm using 7-zip that's built into Windows 10 and I'm going to say extract here. So it'll just put the file in the same folder that I'm in. And this is the file that we actually want. It's 7300 underscore 140 dot DAT. So that's the data file that we need to load into the radio. So I have my SD card from the 7300 plugged into my laptop now, and it's E on my computer. And there is a folder that the ICOM creates called IC7300. So everything pertaining to this radio is under that folder. So we're going to look in here. And if you look at the instructions in the manual, what it tells you to do is to copy the .dat file into the IC7300 folder. So we're going to just drag it over here, and that will copy it in. And that's all we need to do. Now our next step is to put the SD card back into the radio. Okay, so we have our SD card. And actually, as you can see, mine is actually an SD card adapter because I've got a little micro SD card, but the radio doesn't know the difference. As full size SD card or a micro card and adapter, either works fine. So we have placed our file with the update on the card. 
we're going to put it in the radio with the radio off. So now it's in there. We'll turn on the radio. And I'll, I'm going to turn up the volume and the squelch so that you can hear the beeps as I'm going through the menu items. So now we're going to go through the menu item setup, and this is in the manual. It does take you this through this pretty much step by step, but uh, we'll go through it here. So we're going to press menu. We're going to go to set, and we're going to go down to the SD card functions, and we're going to go down here, and you have a choice firmware update. So we're going to go to the firmware update, and on the firmware update screen, you get this bright yellow warning that tells you that this is doing it at your own responsibility. It's very risky. If you make a mistake, you might break the radio and you got to send it back to ICOM. So all of that comes up as a warning. And of course, you need to say yes if you're going to update it. And here's the update that we're going to do. Now, I am going to back out and I am going to do one other step first here. I'm going to do a save setting and I'm going to say new file and this actually has a setting file with today's date on it and it's the first file to today for today. It's the uh, February 28th of 2021 under whoops didn't mean to do that. Uh, wait. Back up. Clear that. There we go. So I'm going to just accept the default setting. The 01 here, if I had done a second file today on the same date, it would be 02 and so forth. So that's the file name. Save. And now that's saved all of my settings for the radio. So we can reload those later. All right, let's go back in here. Once again, we have to scroll down, say yes, and then the file that we want to update is 7300 underscore 140. That's the file that we stored on the SD card a few minutes ago from the laptop. Now, this says it's going to take a minute. It'll automatically restart, never turn it off while it's updating. So once again, you have to read through the warnings here and... Um, they want you to confirm you really want to do that. Now, when I read this, it says yes. If I just tap yes, nothing happens. You have to press and hold yes for one second to make sure the radio knows you really, really, really want to update the firmware. So let's go ahead and do that. And now the update process begins. Okay, the update is finished. You'll see here it says 140 in the lower right corner. The radio comes up on 14.1, which is the default frequency that a factory reset radio comes up with. And you'll notice one of the first things right on the opening screen is a little different. The clock is not over in the corner anymore. It's moved over a little bit. The little symbol for the SD card has moved over a little bit, and you see this little item here that says kilohertz, or KHZ. And that's one of the new features of the updated firmware. They've changed the uh, multifunction knob a little bit, so it's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, feature-rich, user-friendly. It's the same as it operates on the IC705. They've now added that functionality here. And what the little box tells you is the current function that the multi-knob is set to. So right now, it's set to kilohertz. So if I turn it, I will change kilohertz. And we'll go through the other details for that. But looks like we've successfully updated the radio. Now we're going to do one more thing before we go on and look at those functions. We're going to reload all the settings that were in the radio before we did the update. So we're going to go back to set. 
We're going to go down to SD card once again, and now we're going to go to load setting. And we're going to, let's see, scroll down up. It's the bottom one here. So 2021-02-28 underscore 01. That was the settings that I saved a few minutes ago, and I want to load everything. And it warns you you're going to be loading a new reference adjustment setting, and that's the reference adjustment for the main oscillator for your frequency. So it's warning you you're going to be loading that as well. And I'm going to say yes because I just saved it. So it's going to be loading what was already in there. So we're not going to change anything. All right, completed. Restart the 7300. So, and you'll notice nothing works now. So we're just going to power it off. And we'll power it back up. Again, we're at 1.4, and it's back at the frequency that I was at, and you'll see that my meter is the full length, the full size meter, which is what I had before we started all of this. So the radio has been updated. Now let's take a look at what those updates do for us. All right, first let's take a look at what's changed with the scope with this new version of software. One small update that they've done is the number of fixed edges. If you're in fixed mode, they've increased it from three to four. So minor update. They've also changed the way the user interface works a little bit. When you push the uh, edge button, you notice it said number two, and you may or may not have noticed the numbers at each edge here that show you where you are got larger for a little bit, just for a half a second or so. So when you press the edges, it actually kind of highlights what the edges are and shows you which edge group you're on. So that's kind of a nice update that you have one more set of fixed edges on pretty much all of the amateur bands, edge number one is the entire band. And then edge number, edge pair number two is usually like the lower portion of CW. The next one is, you know, like data or some portion of data. And then on this one, the fourth one that they've added is a little bit larger portion of the CW part of the band. Uh, the really cool feature that they've added on the scope function, though, is the scroll function. And what the scroll function does for you, in the case of uh, fixed edges, if I go outside the band, so I'll just go up, and if I go off the scope display, you would just get the little arrows here, the green and the yellow arrows that would point off to the side of the screen wherever your uh, frequency actually was relative. So if I go below it, you see it off to the left. And it wouldn't be on the scope. And if you wanted to tune around for shortwave listening where you weren't in any ham bands, you pretty much had to go to uh, center mode and then if I go to center mode, and I've got it set to 50 kilohertz either side here. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's just, so now we're outside the ham band, and if I'm just scrolling around, I can keep scrolling in center mode because my frequency is always the center of the scope. So let's get back into 40 meters here. And with the scroll mode that they've added. Now, if I press and hold the center fix button, it turns on scroll mode, and this says scroll F because I went to it from fixed. So again, the bottom of my scope is 7 megahertz and the top is 7.3. And now, if I scroll off the screen to the right, it jumps basically to keep up with me. So it scrolls it in the direction that you're going. And the width of the scope stays the same. So we were 300 kilohertz wide from 7 to 7.3. So now it jumped from 7.3 to 7.6. And if we scroll up, 
goes to six to nine, and so on. So it keeps the same edge width that you had for wherever you were, and it also remembers this by band. So, for example, if I change down to 80 meters, I'm still in scroll mode on the scope, and it's 3.5 to 4 megahertz, so it's 500 kilohertz wide, and if I scroll off the top here, now you'll see it's gone from 4 to 4.5, so it scrolls with you. And then you just press the center fix button briefly to get back out of it. And if I do that, it just shows you uh, the same display as before. So I'm still outside the band, and it just shows me the little arrows here to show that I'm off to the right side of the display. So nice, really cool feature, especially um, if you are a shortwave listener and you listen outside of the bands. But even within the ham bands, this can actually be um, kind of a nice feature so, for example, if I set my edges to be, um, well, let me get back out of into regular fixed mode here. So, let's say I pick my edge where I'm uh, 7.0 to 7050. So, in this mode, even within the band, if I want to keep it kind of scrolling across and not have it centered, I'm 50 kilohertz wide, and as I scroll up, it keeps up with me and takes me into the next portion of the band. So it's kind of a personal preference thing. Depends on how you like to, to view the display. Now, just quickly here, we will go, let's go back to regular fixed mode. I'm going to go to the whole band. If you are in center mode, where you're centered on the display... So again, I have my display 100 kilohertz wide here, minus 50 and plus 50. You can go into scroll mode from this mode also, and if I press and hold it, now it says scroll center, and now my indicator won't stay centered. It will move because I'm in scroll mode, and it makes my width of the scope 100 kilohertz wide, so whatever I had set, for center mode, and then again, it just scrolls and it keeps that same width. So, very cool feature, in my opinion. I think this is a really nice enhancement to the scope display, and again, particularly useful if you're moving around in, you know, shortwave listening outside the ham bands, or if you use 60 meters a lot, which isn't one of the set of edges that's normally programmed. So, that's a very nice feature that they've added to the scope, the scroll mode. Well, here we are over 18 minutes into this, and there are still more features to cover. I'm going to end this video here, but I promise that part two will be out with the other features of this update right on the heels of this video. You will find links for the firmware and the supplemental manual download in the description, You'll also find a link for a to z tech. That's the companion website for this channel. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. Please also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.